for the last uh, year uh, in weathering uh, perhaps the storm of the decade in your life and dealing with the state of Washington. And last week we uh, spent a great deal of time uh, talking about everything that has happened. And um, uh, for those of you who were not on the call, you can listen to that call in its entirety at facebook.com forward slash the power is now facebook.com forward slash the power is now and in fact all of the calls will be available uh for your listening pleasure at facebook.com the power is now uh this call is being recorded as well and will, will be available later today on that same website so mike we got into the details about you know what was happening with you and uh just as a a high level summary um you were your license was suspended uh, you lost literally millions of dollars in commissions. You've spent millions of dollars in legal fees. You have been sued by the state. You've countersued by the state. And as it stands, with all of this litigation, all the accusations, all the claims that have been filed and are dismissed, you stand today absolutely innocent of all charges. Nothing, absolutely nothing has, has stuck. And, in fact, uh, you have sued the state and have won. Would that yeah, be a pretty good summary? <laughs> that's a very good summary. You know, I mean, at the end of the day, uh, you know, they came after us hot, hard and heavy with some very, some some very petty accusations, to be honest with you. And yeah. um, and we did counter sue the state. We won. We actually they were found guilty on three separate occasions of violating our civil rights. Mm. And uh, and also they admitted to destroying evidence, uh, shredding documents, deleting emails, the whole nine yards. And uh, you know, and, and at the end of the day, it's it, the, the tragic thing is all the lives of the, the you know the the hundreds and hundreds of clients. I mean, we had 500 you know some odd listings and you know about 278 pending transactions when this all happened. And um, you know, you think about all those lives that were impacted as a result of this. Not to mention the staff members on on our team and all the real estate agents who had, you know, who had, had written offers on our transactions or, you know, who had been involved in some of those transactions. I mean, it's just really there was a ripple effect uh, that, 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 that impacted just literally thousands of lives. And, right. um, and, and that's the tragic part of it. Sure. Well, I, I love a comeback story, a great comeback story. And that's what you are right now. After having gone through all of that, uh, the business is – back up and running. Uh, your wife, Tara, I guess, is, is running the show there, and your focus is primarily on coaching now. It is. And, uh, you know, I am actually 100% full-time coaching now and uh, loving every minute of it. It's where my true passion has lied, for, you know, for quite some time. And uh, I just love it. You know, I, I get done with coaching calls for the day, and I, I just I'm charged up and I'm excited, and I feel like uh, – I feel like I'm really able to to have a, an impact and make a big difference in folks' lives, and it's just it's wonderful. I love it. Well, Mike, what makes you a great coach? Is it the fact that you have been so successful? You got the real world experience. Uh, what makes a great coach? Well, you know, I think the real world experience. I don't think there's any substitute for that. Of you know, clearly, if you want to accomplish something, you need to find someone who's done that and copy what they've done. Um, and, and so, yeah, you know, having produced at a very high level has certainly uh, given me a, a viewpoint and, and an experience uh, level that, that makes it, you know, that it allows me the opportunity to, to some degree. But I, but I think as much as that, it's, it's really, truly caring about each and every one of your clients and really, truly understanding what's going on in their business, understanding that, you know, it's not cookie-cutter coaching. You know, we're not trying to fit people into a particular mold. We're really, truly looking at their business because every one of our clients is different. And our advice, I mean, I'll, you know, if I'm on, you know, you know, a bunch of coaching calls throughout the day, every single one of those calls is going to be different, and it's going to, and, and, and there's different advice given to each and every one of those people and, and sure. helping them in different ways uh, based on their situation and right. based on their goals and their needs at the time. Right. Uh, so I, I think really the, the experience allows us to be able to look into their world and help identify uh, not only where their strengths are and their weaknesses, but, uh, you know, as, as you look at, you know, as we talked about earlier today, a SWOT analysis, you know, you're looking at their strengths, their weaknesses, their opportunities, and their threats. 
and, uh, and the experience really allows you to recognize as you're looking at that areas that need improvement and uh, areas that should be left alone. Well, let's uh, let you demonstrate some of this uh, expertise and knowledge now as we move into our first bullet point, and that is how I grew from zero to 325 ARIO assets in under 10 months. That is phenomenal, 325 assets in under 10 months. So I know there's quite a few people on the call say, I want 325 assets in less than 10 months. Tell me how to make that happen, Mike. <laughs> Well, I'll, I'll tell you what, you know, it's in life, we, you know, we all have ups and downs. Right. And, uh, you know, I've been no exception to that. And, you know, you, you look at most millionaires have, have failed at some point in their life. or mm. and, and, you know, they'll tell you that it's not failure, it's growth. But uh, And I agree with that. But, you know, I was at a point in my life in 2007 where, uh, you know, the market had kind of collapsed and the money shut off. You know, this is June of 07. Mm -hmm. You know, and previous to that, I, I, like a lot of agents out there, was used to, you know, working a 20-hour week and and uh, and really <laughs> having as much opportunity as I wanted and not having to work really hard for it. Right. Uh, you know, and, and we were really, for lack of a better term, we were kind of order takers at that point. And so, uh, you know, when the, when, the, when the money shut off, I, literally, I remember it like it was yesterday, in June, I, I lost $100,000 in commissions in June. Uh, in transactions that fell apart that month uh, because the money was no longer available to the folks that were buying the homes. And, um, and, and it was an eye-opener to me. And I realized very quickly, okay, I've got two choices. I can continue to, to work like I have and, and hope that I can make it through this economy, or I can realize that my bank account isn't what it ought to be. <laughs> and, and if I'm going to be serious about this, if I'm going to stay in the real estate business, I've got to get real serious about my career real fast, and I have got to go out, and I've got to crush it, and I've just, I've got to do everything I can to just literally go out there and crush it, and so I did. I sat down, and I literally made a list. The first thing I did was I asked myself, what are the things that lead directly to a listing or a sale, and, you know, what, not, not what are the things I'd like to do, not, you know, what are the things that are fun for me to do, or, you know, I, I just said, what are the things that are going to lead me directly to li more listings and more sales? Um, and, and it had to be a direct result. It couldn't be, you know, I'm going to put an ad in a paper and hopefully that's going to bring a, a client in. That's, that's not the kind of stuff I was looking at. So as I looked at that, I, I, I created what I call my perfect daily schedule. And my perfect daily schedule is very, very clear. And every single day I follow that perfect daily schedule. And if I didn't follow that perfect daily schedule, I knew I wouldn't reach the goals that I had set for myself. And I, and I wouldn't be able to feed my family, frankly, because I, you know, my back was up against the wall, much like everybody else's at the time. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things, you know, part, we, it, was a, it was really a two-part mission. You know, there was the retail side and there was the REO side. And uh, retail, I'm including short sales in retail. So it was retail and short sale and then the, the REO side. So to your question, to speak specifically to the REO side, I looked at the REO side and I said, okay, what is it going to take to build an REO business? Now, if I want to get REO listings today and I want to go from zero to whatever I can go to, and at the time, in June of 07, I had I'd never done an REO listing, not one. And uh, so I said, okay, well, what do I need to do? So the first thing I did was I got educated. I got, I got coached and I got educated. I found someone who had been very successful in the REO world, and I started coaching with them and learning from them. And... And I, and I educated myself through them on the process. And what it led me to was a, a number of different things that I needed to do to make this happen. One of them was getting on the road and going out and getting face-to-face -face with asset managers, which is very, very relationship-based, which meant that not only did I have to build relationships with asset managers, but in order to do that, first I had to build relationships with agents who had relationships with asset managers. Mm. And, uh, yeah, so huge stuff, huge so building agents, building relationship with agents that have relationships with uh, asset managers, what are some of the um, steps to do that? I know that uh, attending conferences, I'm sure you're an advocate of that, attending conferences uh, to uh, meet asset managers and agents. And it's difficult to, to meet the asset managers, but there's plenty of agents there. Well, and there are. And, you know, I approached it just like I approached my real estate business when I was 18 years old and in high school and brand new to the business. 
uh, you know, the first thing I did then was I said, okay, if I want to make, you know, $100,000 a year, what do I do? I'm only going to take advice from real estate agents making $100,000 a year or more. And then, you know, as I grew, I said, okay, well, now I want to make a half a million a year. So I'm only going to take real estate, you know, advice from real estate agents making a half a million a year, and so on and so forth until finally, you know, there's only 10 guys in the country that are 10 people in the country that I can really, uh, you know, really have serious one-on-one -on -one masterminds with and understand that they know where I'm at and where I'm headed. So I did the same thing in the REO world. When I went to these conferences, I said to myself, okay, if my goal is to do one or two transactions a year in REO, well, then I'm going to go find people that are doing one or two transactions a year in REO, but that's not my goal. But my goal is I want to be the biggest REO broker in Washington State. So what do I need to do? I need to go find the biggest bro REO brokers in other states. And that's okay. exactly what I did. Hmm. So you, you actually got face-to-face -face with these agents. Absolutely. And they were willing to talk to you. Oh, sure. You know, here's what I've found. Successful people are very willing to share their success, and most of them understand that life is an abundance thing. It's, it's not, you know, the, the people that have that scarcity mentality, they're generally not the people who are the most successful. The people who are the most successful have a very abundant mentality, and they know that there's more than enough out, of, out there for all of us, and sharing helps each of us. When I share something with you, Eric, I learn it myself at a deeper level. And, and when you share something with me, you learn to the deeper level. And when we've both shared ideas with each other, we don't just come away with one idea. We both come away with two ideas. And, and that abundance mentality is prevalent, particularly in the REO world, particularly with the top agents in the REO world. So, Mike, you, so you're telling me in 2007 you hadn't done a single REO? Not in my 20-year career, no, sir. <laughs> Not once. I've never done one. And, and you know, it's funny because everybody told me, Michael, there's no way you can get in the REO business right now. Good luck. It's all, you know, it's a good old boys network. You're never going to get in. They've already, right. The banks already have all the relationships. And you know what I said to myself? I said, hog wash. I don't believe that for a second. And you know what? The more people told me I couldn't do it, the more motivated I was to go out and make it happen. Well, I, I love what you're saying about uh, surrounding yourself with people that are doing what you want to do, uh, doing the volume you want to do, uh, making the money you want to make, and um, uh, that's what you were intent on, and you know you had to model after someone else. So uh, first you set a goal that uh, you were going to get in and that you were going to you know, crush it, as you put it, uh, and then you came up with a, a perfect daily schedule. Uh, tell us more about this perfect daily schedule. What were some of the day-to-day -day things that you did uh, to help get you to that level? You know, Eric, uh, for a real estate agent, there are three things that a real estate agent should do. And I'll tell you, this is the same for loan officers. I know you have a lot of loan officers on the call. These same three things are exactly, if a loan officer wants to make more money today and have greater balance in their life, they need to understand that there are three things they should be doing that need to be 90% of their day every day. 90%? 90% of your day every day needs to be made up of these three things. And if you will make up 90% of your day with these three things, you will make as much as you want to make in this world, and you will right. go as far as you want to go. Okay. Very simple. You ready? Number one. I wish I had a drum roll on the call. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what's funny? People get a, they're almost offended when I tell them this because when I tell them this, they're like, oh, you know, that's too simple. You know? Right, it's right. Funny, you know, it's like it's like when Christ tells the guy to go bathe in the River Jordan. You know, it's like oh, I'm not going to go do that. That's too simple. That's not going to save me. That's not going to cleanse me. Right. He wants to climb a mountain or something, right? <laughs> oh my gosh, seriously. I mean, you know, I wish it was more difficult than it is because then people, more people would believe me. Right, but right. It, it literally, it's, it boils down to three things, and okay. it's super, super simple. Okay. Number one, lead generation. You know, you're not in the real estate or the loan business. You're in the lead generation business. That's your number one task every day needs to be lead generation. All right, Mike, that's too simple. No. <laughs> <laughs> I know, and that's what people tell me all the time, and it pulls me away. It's like, well, Michael, but i got to do this, and i got to do that. And I gotta... No, you don't. Okay, well, let's try, to, let's try to make it complex here. Lead generation, what do you mean exactly? <laughs> you want to know the hardest thing that needs to do in this world and the thing that most people have the hard, toughest time with in, in real estate and mortgage? It is, it is so simple, it is so, and, it's, and I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not a cold call guy. That's not, that's not who I am. I, I'm, not a, I'm not a 